Now I'd like to recognize your amazing physical therapy faculty. You would not be here without these dedicated, compassionate, and inspiring individuals. Many of you have built relationships with these faculty that will last a lifetime, as these will be the individuals who will serve as references for your jobs and future professional endeavors. I'd also like to recognize our amazing staff who support our faculty and students every day. Our faculty and staff work tirelessly, and especially in the past year, to ensure that you get to make it here today to graduation, and we are all very proud of your accomplishments. So all of our faculty and staff, please stand up. Please show your appreciation. Now, graduate, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. While you're all earning doctorates here today, you still have much to learn. Learning does not stop when you receive your doctorate. In fact, once you start your first job after leaving here, you'll realize very quickly that you know very little about the world. This graduate is normal. However, you can feel comfort in knowing that with the academic preparation that you have received from WFAU, that you have been prepared to ask questions, think critically, and seek new knowledge. Skills that you will use for the rest of your life. For you are now the part of a small group of Americans with a graduate degree. In fact, only one and a half percent, one and a half percent of our professional doctoral degree. You are part of a minority that comes with great distinction. All I ask is that you use this well-deserved privilege to go out into the world and make it better than you know. For you have already done this in Bowling Green, at WKU, and within the College of Health and Human Services. I am inspired by all you have accomplished, and I look forward to seeing each of you receive your academic credit, symbolizing the completion of your doctoral degree. So DPT Class of 2021, congratulations! You did it! I hope you take it. Soak it all in to truly celebrate this milestone with your family and friends. I am truly in awe of everything you've accomplished, and I wish, wish you nothing but the best in the future. So, now for the DPT class of 2022, I would like to congratulate all of you as you earn your white coat and embark on this next step in your physical therapy program. For those of you in the audience, the white coat ceremony is a rite of passage in which students are bestowed their white coat, signifying the end of their final year of classes and the beginning of their clinical rotations. Class of 2022, I know these last couple years have been rigorous, and the past year especially challenging, but you're truly unique. Your first year as a DPT student was interrupted by the pandemic after only one and a half semesters, and now you're gonna go complete your clinical rotations during the same pandemic. Just imagine the stories you're going to have to tell your children and your grandchildren. And I certainly hope by this time next year, when you all graduate, COVID-19 will be a thing of the past. I know you're going to continue to be challenged this upcoming year in your clinical rotations, but just as you have made friends in this program, you will make friends in your rotations who will become colleagues for a lifetime. Know that I'm inspired by all you've accomplished and you will accomplish in your head. I look forward to addressing you next time at your free commencement voting ceremony and at commencement. Maybe even able to shake your hand or a fist bump. We'll see. So study hard, work hard, and of course, go talks. this morning and said the CDC recommends wearing seat belts outside your car. I just thought that was kind of neat. On behalf of the WKU DPT Advisory Board, on behalf of the State Licensure Board of Physical Therapy of Kentucky, 
and on behalf of the Kentucky APTA chapter, it is indeed my honor to be here to see this occasion and to celebrate your success. I kind of look at myself, I'm a grandfather now times four and a half, one's baking in the oven right now. And I kind of look at myself, and we were talking a while ago with Anita and, and, and the Dean, and, and we were talking about as a grandparent, how you can just spoil uh, your grandchildren. And I kind of look at it this way because my obligations are zero with each one of you. But as a, as a proud grandparent, I get to see you just blossom. You've heard a little bit from me over the past few years when we talked about rocks. And some of you have your rocks here today. And we talked about you being a rock from the creek of Kentucky or wherever you want to get your rock that's a little bit rough around the edges. And what this program is going to do to you on polishing that rock and your character and your abilities. You've heard a little bit from me about sacrifice. And I think we acknowledge the sacrifices that everyone in this room, whether it's parent, grandparent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, friend, has had in your collective success. The sacrifice that you have made and the deposits that you have made to be here that didn't happen by accident. And you've heard a little bit from me about servant leadership and what it means to be a servant leader. To be that coach that invests so much into someone else that they'll run through a wall for you. Because as, as a student, as a player, you know that coach wants the best for you in every regard. Rather than that coach or that teacher that's using you for their self-gain and glory will shut down. So we're not going to talk about those today. I'm going to start off by a couple of personal stories and bore you to death. 1979, in this very room, which was not air conditioned, which didn't have these fancy red foam seats, which didn't have these skyboxes here, I was registering as a student with punch cards, with tables set all up. And you had to look at your schedule and go find a computer punch card. And people were crying because they ran out of cards and they couldn't get their class and you'd have to run up to the hill and have your department head or have your teacher sign off. And we're sweating. I'm playing tennis for Western Kentucky University and our tennis coach on section 104 before they were the boxes, after we had a weight training would make us run the steps. Wow, we've come a long way from that. 1979, when the dinosaurs were roaming and the pterodactyls were flying. Physical therapy has come a long way from that. At a bachelor's degree, knowing enough to be dangerous, going out as a physical therapist. It evolved into a master's degree. Then as you know right now, it's a doctor degree. Can you believe that you have your doctorate? Fascinating. And the white coach, you're well on your way to them. Three weeks ago in Lexington, Kentucky, at this very time, I was in surgery and I had a total knee replacement three weeks ago today in Lexington. And for those that don't know, they take the top of the shin bone and they cut it off. They take the bottom of the thigh bone and they cut it off. And then they take these big big stakes about that, that long and they drive it up into the thigh bone, into the shin bone and then they glue it and then they sew you back together and tell you to have a good day. I want to share with you not as a physical therapist but as a patient what was so important to me. My wife Portia and we've been together since high school she's tolerated beyond years, beyond anything imaginable. 
Her dad's a doctor. She grew up with me in PT school. She's worked in our business in therapy her whole life. And she's scared. I'm scared because I had a stent placed in a year ago. I'm thinking, will I recover from surgery? Will I throw a clot? You know, surgery is not a big deal. This happens every day. But when you have it, to you it's a big deal, right? So I'm worried about that. I had a physician, Dr. Christensen in Lexington. COVID, I go into the pre-op, it's an outpatient surgery center, I go into pre-op, and no one's in the room, he's not doing this for show, and he sits down and he prays with me for about three minutes. And this is one of the best surgeons in a three-state area. And he asked for God to really, really guide him of clarity and to guide him through this process. He prayed for me to have a, a positive outcome with pain-free and function. And as a patient, that meant everything. It was sincere. It was real. My therapist that came out, I stayed in Lexington for a week at an extended care, uh, like a, a Marriott residence inn. And my therapist was there daily. I was becoming pretty frustrated because I did everything right. And it's a balance between controlling swelling and getting range of motion. The more swelling, the more scar tissue, the less range of motion. And my knees swelled up unbelievably. And I had a game ready on, I had icing, I was doing all the right things. And my therapist recognized my frustration. And he backed off for a couple of days. And then he brought me in and spent about three hours with me and an outpatient to get what I needed. I want to give you a tip today, TIP. And the first thing on the T is trust. We talked about this earlier as well today. You will have to develop trust as a physical therapist with your patients. Now how do you do that? How do you develop trust with your mom, your dad, your friend, your spouse? With your employer, with your patient? How do you develop trust? Trust is developed by being very genuine. By active listening and not coming in with a self-serving agenda. The best thing that my therapist could do was to listen and to let me vent and, and to know that, that and give me the impression that we're in this together. That they're just not checking off a box. That they're just not going through the motions to get to the next patient, to get home, to go eat pizza, and go out to, uh, you know, go out and, on, the, on the tail. Honesty develops trust. If a patient asks you something you don't know, don't, don't be asshole. Don't, don't, don't just give it an answer. So you know that's a good question. I'm going to find that out. You talk about building trust and integrity. For you to be confident enough to say, I don't know, but I will find out. That builds all kinds of trust. I think the other thing is that you want to exceed expectation. I came home. I live in Alberton out in the county here, about 20 miles out. It was last Saturday, two weeks post-op, and my, stick, my staples were still in. My physical therapist, Rick Winquist, who's a great therapist in town, on a rainy Saturday was out seeing me. He said, Tom, what about these staples? I said, oh, I'll get them taken out next week when I'll go up to Lexington. He said, Tom, we're not doing that. I said, what do you mean, Rick? He said, I'm not leaving these staples in because that's a source of infection. They need to come out. I said, well, you'll be out here on Monday, we'll just do it then. You know what Rick did? He said, Tom, I'm going back. I'm gonna get a staple remover. I'm gonna get stereo strips and I'm gonna get a bandage. And he went into town and came back two hours later for that. That meant the world to me. He exceeded my expectation. The I part of tip, the T is trust, the I stands for investment. 
one investment as a physical therapist or a student am I going to make? And I want you to invest in relationships, the relationships of your patients, of your peers, of your doctors, and of your administration and management team, wherever you work. Be intentional. It's like any other relationship. You won't maximize the advantages of it unless you take the time to invest in a meaningful, non-self-serving way. Invest in your health. Look the part. Your physical therapist. Look and act the part. You're worth it. You're worth the investment of time and effort and work-life balance. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually to do that. Invest in your career. You know, who cares if continuing ed, if they don't pay $1,500 for a continuing ed course? Pay for it yourself. Go online. Set up a funding page. Beg for it still. Invest in your career development. Invest in finding a mentor. One of the things I so regret in my life, and I'm 59, is that at the age of 20, I didn't seek out a mentor. Someone I respected, someone that could guide me, someone that would feed into me so that I wouldn't make the many mistakes that I've made in life. I want you to invest into the community. Go ahead and speak in Kiwanis. Go to the local grade school and take a skeleton and talk to young students about the body and get them psyched up on what you do. Do a scoliosis screening. Work with handicapped children on a hippotherapy program. Work with the PT students in doing research. Finally, the P on tip is professionalism. You know, that's hard to define, it's like beauty. It's hard to define, but you know what it is when you see it. And getting back to being a professional, you've got to look and be the part. And that means being prepared. The therapists I respect come into work about a half hour to 45 minutes early, and they look at their schedule and they develop a game plan. I'm watching a series about a hospital in New York City on neurosurgeries. And before the surgery, in the OR room, these neurosurgeons and their team take about 15 to 20 seconds in silence and they get into the mindset of the game that they're going to be. Now, I know that may sound a little corny, but be prepared. Know your patient, know the history, know where you're going, know where the supplies are, know where the equipment is, know where the resources are, and attack it. It's just no different from playing a basketball game, or a baseball game, or a football game. Be prepared. Be active in your professional association. I know dues are, are high, beg, borrow, and steal to be a member of the American Physical Therapy Association. Go to Washington, D.C., go to Frankfurt, go to your state capital, go to your local legislatures. It's the local legislatures that allow for this program to be here for you to graduate that decided several years ago with myself and Dr. Mansfield to have a program. Advance your skills and be a mentor to someone else. I want to end in one final story. In London, Kentucky, my second year out of physical therapy school, I was the director of a small hospital. We saw about 80 patients a day. I had a PTA and six tests. You could get away with that then. I had a very frail substitute teacher retired that probably weighed 100, 100 pounds soaking wet. She came in with her husband. She had been retired. She was 70 years old. And she, she was uh, riding on the chalkboard and developed some neck pain. 
And so she went to her family practice doctor and said, oh, you've got some muscle spasms. I'm going to give you this muscle relaxant. That's some anti-inflammatories. And she tried that. She went back to her, to her doctor and said, I'm not getting any better, doctor. He said, well, I'm going to send you to see Tom in physical therapy. And the order was for cervical traction, moist heat ultrasound, and exercise. She came in with her husband, and she was wearing a cervical collar. And that's a soft collar around the neck. And I said, Miss Jones, Miss Jones wasn't her name, but I said, Miss Jones, would you take that collar off for me, please? So she took it off. And she held her head up as she was talking. And she didn't make a big deal out of it. And she was talking and answering her questions and holding her head up. I said, Miss Jones, what happens when you take your hands off? She said, oh, I really, really hurt. I have happened to develop a relationship with a neurosurgeon, Dr. Brooks, from Lexington, Kentucky, who would come down once a month and have a clinic and see about 100 patients in London, Kentucky. It happened to be his day of being there. I said, something doesn't feel right here. I know she's been to the doctor. I assume she has x-rays. Something doesn't feel right. And I said, Miss Jones, if I can get you to put your collar back on, and if I can get Dr. Brooks to see you, would you be willing to go upstairs and see a neurosurgeon today? She said, sure. I called Dr. Brooks. He said, get her up here. I'll be glad to have a look at her. Well, about an hour and a half goes by, and I get a call from Dr. Brooks. He says, Tommy, you won't believe what we found here. She has a cancer that is eating up her C2, her C3, and almost her C4 vertebrae. It's really non-existent. I am life-flighting her right now to Lexington. And we are having a, a, a surgery this afternoon, or tonight when I get back. He said, if you would have put her in traction, or even if you would have turned her head, she'd be paralyzed and probably die. Now, that doesn't happen every day. But I want to I give you that take home. To follow your gut, take a deep breath in a busy day, Go that little extra to what it takes to make a difference. And I want you to wrap it all up. The, 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 all the tip and information. I want you to wrap everything up in a spirit of servant leadership. Of going out there both as new grads and as white coat participants, as students going to your clinicals to wrap everything up that you've learned in a spirit of genuineness and servant leadership, doing so for others and putting others before yourself. We're so proud of you. Go out, make a difference, and, and just rock and roll. Thank you very much.
Google has been there for me throughout these two years of PT school and answered some dumb questions like, what's the TMJ, and what does the piriformis do, and it didn't fail me for the white coat ceremony meeting. Google said that this ritual signifies students' entrance into the physical therapy profession and serves as recognition for all of the hard work that led us up to this point. This white coat represents everything we've done so far in PT school. All of the anatomy and neuro classes. Some of us getting sick in the cadaver lab. All of the hours of labs we spent practicing on each other and panicking about practicals. All of the early mornings getting to school at 6 a.m. to cram for an exam that wasn't until 10. All of the research meetings and group projects and trying to find personal time so we didn't go crazy. And then having to do all of that while following COVID guidelines. We've learned so much and probably forgotten a little bit too, but we're finally about to head to our first rotation. So congratulations, y'all. As we transition from just students at physical therapy school to our official title in the clinic as a physical therapy student, as Dr. Young taught us, we need to thank those who helped us get here. Our parents, our siblings, our grandparents, our friends, everyone who encouraged us to apply to school and who listened to us when we have a bad day, we thank you. To all the professors who sacrificed their free time to help us when we need it, and who offer us smiles and words of encouragement in the hallway, thank you. And to Audra, who works so hard behind the scenes and always sends me a smiley face when I lean over, thank you. I lastly want to thank my Lord and Savior, who has blessed me so much by placing me in this amazing program at Western Kentucky University. So, as we take this white coat and begin our first rotation, let's remember the hard work that got us to this point and the people who helped us on our journey. Again, congratulations class of 2022. May we all have great rotations and try to help a few patients along the way. Thank you.
We understand that none of us will be here today without your continued love and support that you've provided us during our time in the program, as well as all the sacrifices you've made to ensure we arrive at this point today. We've all had moments throughout when we have felt in over, in over our heads and at times have felt like giving up. But thankfully, we had your constant encouragement to help us overcome any situation we were struggling with. For this, we are extremely grateful for all that you have done to get us where we are today. To the DPT Class of 2022, congratulations on receiving your white coats today. You guys have all worked extremely hard in overcoming the challenges presented to you and has come out the other side better students and therapists because of it. Good luck to all of you on your upcoming clinical rotations and with the final year of your DPT education. To the WKU DPT Class of 2021, what an absolutely amazing journey it has been over the last three years. We have faced many highs and lows, good days and days we'd like to forget, but we made it. And we should all feel so incredibly proud of our accomplishments, both individually and collectively as a class. We've had so many fun times and have so many stories from our time together that it is almost impossible to remember them all. As my friend Alex Bradley always said, our class really should, really should have been featured on a reality TV show. There surely would have been no shortage of content. I could stand up here for hours and tell so many stories about the time we've had together, but Miss Audrey threatened to cut my mic and kick me off the stage if I went over my allotted time, so I must digress. When I finally took some time and sat down to reflect on the past three years and what they have meant to me, it quickly became surreal how fast they've gone and how we have finally reached the end of our journey. I thought about all the good times we've had together, as well as the more challenging and difficult times we've faced, and how through it all, we remained united on the ultimate goal of stay true for our passions to physical therapy. We've made many friends that will last a lifetime during our three years here, and although it is a very sad day that we will now begin to go our separate ways, it is at the same time a very exciting opportunity for all of us to apply what we have learned during our time here and provide the best level of care to patients all over the state and the country. I want to end today by congratulating and thanking all of you as my classmates. You guys have driven and motivated, motivated me to be the best person and physical therapist I can be. I know we will do great things in the world of healthcare and will make a positive impact on many lives over the course of our careers. In a year unlike any other, I am extremely fortunate and grateful to graduate from the class now. Thank you.
full confidence that each of you embody the skill needed to be successful. You can and will change the lives of your patients for really good. As you don the white coat, remember the sacrifice, hard work, tears, and laughter that have brought you this far. And also remember that this coat that you have earned represents the trust that the program and the university is placing in you. Congratulations, class of 2022.
So in the presence of your peers, friends, family, and professors, and in view of the honor profession into which you are about to enter, will you join me in reciting the oath of a physical therapist? In the presence of my peers, Students, you may be seated. Oh, I'm sorry, stand back up again. I want the audience to give you some recognition here. Okay, so now you may be seated. A DPT class of 2022, on behalf of the faculty, I challenge you to continue your pursuit of knowledge throughout your life. I urge you to aspire to leave the world a better place by helping your patients to improve their quality of life. Do this with the highest ethical standards as we've all expressed, showing respect and dignity to everyone you encounter. Finally, seek ways to improve the profession of physical therapy through your conduct and by sharing your knowledge with others whenever possible. This concludes the white coat presentation component of this ceremony. Let's give these white coat recipients one more round of applause.
Taylor Berger. Dylan Boone. Josh Dowden. Samantha May. Alex 
Phelps. Altruism to put others before self 
and compassion and caring to consider the needs of others to begin with are just a few of the service-related core values of being a physical therapist. The class before you has a great record for service that spans from Bowling Green to Honduras and includes countless acts of kindness to communities and our program. This year, we evaluated the volunteer and service activities of all students and have discovered that there are two students who stand out for having a heart to serve among a class full of servant hearts. The first student has quietly and effectively served our program through assisting behind the scenes for every single event we have held here in the program. She does so with a bright smile and a cheerful countenance. She has also served the community through the Buddy House and Special Olympics. She is a friend to others and to us, and we recognize Emily Lysak for her steady record of helping out around the house and in the neighborhood. The second student has a service record that does span from Honduras to Bowling Green. She has served the Buddy House by leading yoga sessions and has become a regular volunteer by helping with countless other Buddy House activities. In fact, I just learned the other day that after her clinical experience ended, she reached out to the Buddy House to see what they needed during her week off. We recognize Andy Young for her record of community service both here and abroad. While both students have served in very different ways, we feel it is very fitting to show the varied opportunities to live up to our core values by honoring them together today. Congratulations, Emily and Anna, for being the co-recipients of this award. Um, normally, we have a clap. However, because of the timing of when the semester ended, we were not able to get that. Um, we will receive your claps at future date. So, thank you. So before we get to the individual awards for this particular award, I'd like to say something about the whole class. Who would have ever thought that the research projects that these students imagined in the fall of 2018 would be affected so greatly by a worldwide pandemic, at the point when most of the projects were just beginning to come to fruition in the spring of 2020? We as a faculty recognize each student and each research group for their hard work in reimagining their projects as the world of face-to-face -face interactions virtually came to a screeching halt. This is no easy task. In recognition of the job they all did, completing meaningful projects in the face of adversity, I am asking those of you who are able to stand in the audience to rise and give them collectively a round of applause. projects interrupted, they had to take their research courses out of sequence while they were on their clinical experiences. So good job, all of them. So this year, just this past Tuesday as a matter of fact, these students presented their projects at the, K the APTA Kentucky Western District meeting. Attendees rated these projects and their overall ability to describe the findings of their projects and the clinical importance of them. The scores were tallied, and this year the group with the highest rating, thus earning the 2021 Research Award, was for the project entitled Correlation of Tummy Time and Plagiocephaly, a Critically Appraised Topic. Of course, I am especially proud of this group who worked so hard this semester to complete everything because I'm their research advisor. Please join me in congratulating Warren Riddell and Charlie Bailey for receiving the Research Award this year.
So we could just look at Zach's speech and see why he's on the stage, I think. That was an awesome speech. So the Leadership Award is given to a student identified by peers to be a leader among the members of the WKU DPT Class of 2021. There are many qualities that make up a good leader. Among them is being willing to mobilize others to greatness by bringing them together for a common cause. When the students of this class met and came together in the summer of 2018, they knew one another less than four months before, in the fall, they were asked to vote for their officers. Although DPT students do spend a lot of time together in the early days of being in the program, it is not easy to decide who would be the best leader as president for the class. Based on the results of voting for this award, it seems that the students wisely selected their president, who has demonstrated steady leadership over the past three years. One student stated, Zach has shown multiple leadership traits while taking on the role of president of the class. He truly deserves this. So often, leadership positions can be thankless jobs. Today, Zach, it seems that your peers have decided to publicly thank you for a job well done. Please join me in congratulating Zach for earning the 2021 Leadership Award. It is well deserved. While he's leaving, um, the last recipient of the award is, could not be with us today, but I'm going to read it anyway. The recipient of this award embodies the essence and spirit of the ideal physical therapy student. It is the outstanding achievement award selected by faculty. Some of the characteristics of an outstanding student include demonstrating compassion, integrity, being an example for others, having a strong work ethic, extending professionalism and courtesy to others, and possessing an overall positive attitude. The faculty has selected Jonathan Ulrich to be this year's recipient of the Outstanding Achievement Award. Jonathan has worked diligently in the classroom and has served our program as a student worker with distinction, going beyond the call of duty and day in and day out. We have come to realize that his desire to help others before himself is genuine and sincere. He consistently embodies the core values of being a physical therapist. The faculty recognizes Jonathan for his positive outlook, integrity, and work ethic. Unfortunately, Jonathan could not be here today, so we ask that you would join us in a round of applause so loud that it reaches Tennessee, where he is spending time with his family today. So do you think he heard that? So all of you are going to have to let him know that your congratulations for him. Thank you. Okay, we are nearing the end of the ceremony, and the faculty and I are very proud of every one of you, those who are leaving the program shortly, and those who are leaving to go on to some of the We are very fortunate to have the ceremony at home. We are grateful for that, but more, more importantly, this is a wonderful place to have it, and so it's very exciting to have you in this arena. Graduates and high school students, please stand. And those in attendance, please give them a round of applause for the Thank you very much. Congratulations. Oh, 